What's up guys and welcome to part 10 of the Ultimate Guide to Bloodborne. Today we're going to be doing Yahar Ghoul, the yeah. Unseen Village. So, the first thing you want to do is actually get that blood rock at the other right. It's chunk. Blood, yeah, chunk. So we're grabbing this. On the way back up, I miss a chunk because I thought we grabbed it when we done Bergenworth. When we grabbed the bolt gem, because I usually do, but I forgot to. So when you get to the top of... I get stuck on that for these some reason. Top of these stairs, do an immediate U-turn to the left and there'll be a chunk there. I do go back and get it. Yeah. Just so you guys know. But um, I'm going to... I just run straight down these stairs every time. Yeah, you want to avoid these guys immediately simply because they can gang up. If you actually try to fight them, they can gang up on you pretty hard because you need to stop and hit them while you get shot at by several of them. Plus the amygdala will end up trying to attack you as well. So um, There's also the fact that the... Uh, no, the amygdala won't attack you. It's the... Uh, these guys are summoned by a bell ringing woman. Yeah. So what that means is they're buffed and they do more damage. So you have to kill her. Um, now she won't summon multiplayer, she's purely just a PvE bell ringer for summoning these grunts. You'll see more of them in the dungeon. Um, but basically what it means is that she can infinitely respawn these guys until she's dead. So we're going to kill her and then I'm going to make my way back to the chunk that Tony told me that I forgot. Not only this, these guys end up losing defense once you Significantly, kill her. yeah. So they, they become, lose their buff. They become regular enemies from like the middle of a yarn. Yeah, so they, they, they become easier to kill once she's dead. So obviously you want to... Take care of take care of her first. I mean, that's there's no point even killing them because obviously they'll just they'll just come them. back as well, yeah. And it's it's a pain in the ass when you have to deal with like a million of these guys at once. So there's that chunk that we accidentally missed. Yeah. And now we're going back. So now we're going to run back down here. Now I take a I take a weird route round, and the reason why I take this route is because I find it a little bit easier normally, but I just get shit on today. Like this is like this is a continuation of how badly I played in Nightmare Frontier. So um, I'm just I'm, I'm not going to play very well in this section at all. So you've got to jump down onto this little platform through the gap in the gate at the side of the stairs. And I guess you bolt paper. Now doing this, you commit to going this way, just so you know. Yeah. So I missed that. I meant to land on that so I can run this way, now, taking less damage. What, it's going through that gap in the fence essentially makes you skip out up like a whole building mm -hmm. of the level. But we're going to go back into the building, show you where it starts, show you what you missed, etc. Yeah. So what I'm doing now is, of course, prioritise the bell ringing women immediately. But there's quite a lot of guys in here. Um, some of these witches followed me up, which is uh, yeah. normally they don't. But just look out for that, because as you can see, I, I, it does get pretty hairy. Yeah, I mean, the, the witches were outside, essentially. So yeah. um, they're the enemies that are not in this building. But so the issue is, is that the witches will respawn because there's a bell ringing woman for them as well. Yeah, so I just had to take them out just to get them out of the room. However, it does make sense to actually get the bolt paper and jump down and come in through the back door that we came through because it means you're right next to the bell ringing room. If you go through the yeah. normal door, it means you actually need to go through the buffed enemies before you get to the bell yeah, ringing room. you have to go all the way around. I mean, we're going to go back out that way anyway just to show you the way to go if you didn't go through the bolt paper. Yeah. So I get quite lucky here and I'm able to just, like, hit these guys through the fence. I can't shoot them through the fence, unfortunately, but I can hit them through it and they can hit me, so... Yeah, that, this was pretty lucky. This guy's usually down at the door on the opposite side of the room, that one right in front of us. He's usually yeah. over there. Um, so it means that you have to go through him or get around him to get through this door, um, as well as to get this item in the back corner as well. So we immediately remove the buff by killing the women, which makes them a lot easier in this section. So that, that worked out in the end. Yeah, so... Uh, as you can see, this is the bottom of the stairs, so if you didn't go through the gap in the fence, this is where it would take you. Yeah, here's the gap in the fence here. So you can either jump through the gap in the fence and then fight the buffed enemies through yeah. here, or you can jump down <laughs> and get the bell ring on immediately, and hopefully the witches don't follow you, essentially. so Yeah, even if they do, you, you should be alright. You just need to not panic. Yeah. And this door here, this is a shortcut door. I don't know why I didn't just open that door. But... Somehow a shortcut as well, like it's, not, it's nothing. <clears throat> I know, it really is nothing. What do you do? You skip out going round a bit of fucking fence work for a while. Yeah. So now we're going to go up these stairs and we're not going to kill anything or grab anything up here yet. There's a hole in the fence on the right that we're going to need to drop down to because it, give, it gets the upper cathedral key, which you need for late game. And I've never seen that fall animation. That was like on, like my head was lower than my legs during that animation. Yeah. I was like sideways. Never seen that animation. Didn't even know it existed. So anyway, here's the bell ringing room for the witches, or we say witches, but see the, the women that are holding like the weapons and shit, like that's... The hags. Yeah. Well, apparently as well, I didn't know this, but while they're under that fault, while they're in that state of, oh god, the woman's dead, now I'm losing my buff, help me. If you shoot them during that, you just get an auto parry. Yeah. I didn't know that until I done it to this guy. 
So I was that that was new to me. So yeah, you can take care of that guy really easily if you hit the uh, bell ringing women, then parry him immediately. Yeah, these guys these guys become really trivial once you've taken on the bell ringing women. Um, and now dropping through this hole in the wall here because this is the upper cathedral key, and that lets us Dude. access a Briatus. It lets us buy bolt paper, and uh, not bolt paper. It lets us buy the rose marinus and stuff like that as well by getting the badge that's in the upper cathedral. Yeah. Uh, there's there's a lot do... of good stuff up in Upper Cathedral that's worth it. Yeah, definitely. So it's, obviously you want to get this like regardless. Um, you know, if you want to go for like a full completion of the game anyway. Yeah, I mean, after after doing this, I think you pretty much only need to... Um, I think all you need to do is the dungeons to get every weapon and then beat every and beat the uh, the final dungeon boss. And you probably platinum the game after doing this guide because this takes you pretty close. Yeah. Um, I think it's only like exterior stuff that you have to do because there's nothing in Bloodborne like um, you don't get a troll for like getting rare weapons and shit like that, it's just getting every weapon. So these stairs are actually the stairs that you land next to if you go through that gap in the fence with the bolt paper earlier. Yes. So that's just you know showing you that that's where it comes round to and obviously this does back yeah. to the, the exit of that place that we skipped essentially. Yeah, so this is this is uh, where we drop down to get the upper cathedral key. Um, so now we're going to clear this area. That hag just goes off the side for whatever reason. Yeah, so there's a whole load of hags that you need to kill at this point, but buff Tonitrus, putting in the work. Yeah, two one or two them. shot in them is one or two shot in them is really good. They all have like different defense values. I think the ones who have the, the hatchet, these ones go down in one. Yeah, they go down in one. The ones who have the hook go down in two. Oh no, there's a hatchet and she took two. Yeah, but she was a hooded hatchet one. That's huh. the difference. The, ha the ones that have the hatchet that don't have the hood go down in one, but the ones who have like the actual hood go down in two. I, I don't get it. Like This one will go down in one because she doesn't have a hood. But the hammer one will be two. Yeah. Yeah. See, it, it's, it's really strange, but you notice these little tiny things every now and again. So, right, now uh, there's an amygdala firing a big fucking yeah. laser at so you. So you are safe on the left side of this centre platform with a chair, and then you just want to run down at a slightly right, uh, on the right side of the stairs slightly. Yeah. Skip this lantern because there's a crystal lizard or a wandering nightmare that um, alerts immediately. So just go for that first before you get the lantern. The lantern's going to be there when you get back. So get your bloodstone chunks first. And now I think we're going to go back to the dream, upgrade our weapons, check our... Uh, durability and stuff like that because uh, we had enough chunks to go uh, upgrade a weapon so that was worth it um, as well as you may as well like, while you're in here you should just refill and everything so any uh, any like bone marrow that you're missing or any of that just take it out of your storage box and stuff before you go any further but that's just got a plus 8 tonitrus um, did I use the sock lever in this video? Uh, I don't remember uh, you did for Dark Beast Power so in this episode, no, there's I actually... No, before this part, because it needed repaired somehow. I don't know. Uh, in this uh, episode, there's two bosses that we're going to be defeating. One being Dark Beast Pearl, and the other one being the One Reborn. Now, Dark Beast Pearl is a strange boss, because what seems to be the case is if you didn't... If you wanted to defeat him at Hypogean Goal the first time you can get to him, he's really difficult. But if you do the rest of the game and then defeat Come him... Come back to him. Yeah, he's at this point he's super easy. easy. Yeah. So there is no in between. He's either going to be kind of hard or stupidly easy. So. Yeah, it's it's either or, and um, unfortunately he's super easy now. Um, the other thing, the other difference between Parl and One Reborn, of course, is that One Reborn is a shite boss and Parl is a good boss. Yeah. Parl's an interesting. He's a good looking boss. One Reborn is just bullshit. So we're coming up here, going through this gap in the fence, so we can hit. Uh, this guy here, and this guy will be doing like taking pot shots at you if you don't fall yeah. down there. The one, the, the enemies that have like the red tint on them, those are the ones that have been summoned by a bell ringing woman. Yeah. So we're going to take out the dogs because dogs are a pain in the ass, and then we're going to go for the bell ringing woman here before the other three guys come anywhere near us. Um, she actually has four more. There's these three guys here, and then there's one down by those vials. Yeah. Now, what you should really have done is parried the big guy, but. Yeah. But I mean, Bloodborne lock on is OP. Plus, I shot that guy thinking, will it give me a backstab as well? Just because he's, because I thought it would just uh, yeah. crit me animation as opposed to like a uh, uh, specific animation. But nah, it's not the backstabs don't work. So. Nah. so always take out the gunman first because these guys just like these guys pecking away at you can be really bad. That like you can get stunned and then the big guy can get a counter hit on you and it'll yeah. do a shitload of damage. Don't want to do that. And then of course, 
vials, bullets, max out and everything before you pick up that guy's stuff because they have a tendency to drop vials. Not only that, this item here is a big load of 8 vials, so... Yeah, I mean, there's that too. But what, what you see me do there is that I managed to be at full health with 20 vials and I've got 5 extra bullets because I took... because I, um Because I used blood bullets, or I created blood bullets before I picked up those items. So it worked out in the end where I've got 5 extra bullets and I'm at max vials yep. and health as well so it's always good to do that against the big guys that you know will always drop blood vials on a regular basis so now what we're going to do is we're going to slow walk to this hunter guy up here i'm surprised i didn't alert the one now there's three here and there's a pretty good method for dealing with them which is really reliable now what we're going to do is we're going to walk up and we're going to backstab this one because this one um this one has the the chance to do the most amount of damage to you anyway <clears throat> because you're using beast claws and the way beast claws work is that when you transform them into their buffed version, the more consecutive hits you get on someone, the more damage you do per consecutive hit. So he has the chance to like kill you in five very quick hits, where the first hit will do barely anything, but the fifth hit will take away like half of your health easily. So we want to single him out. Um, so what we're doing now is we've got all the way back to the lantern to work with. So we're going to utilize that. We're going to try and um, deal with these guys one at a time. So I'm just going to keep spacing them back and then taking my hits when I get a chance to, when they're separated. Yeah. Um, if they do get too close, it's okay. We can go all the way back to the lantern room. And we know that one of them definitely never enters, which is the one who's attacking me right now. The one with the, um, the, one with the flame sprayer definitely doesn't enter. The one with the rifle spear and cannon, though, he enters the lantern room, to my surprise, because I've never had him up here, because... He just appeared out of nowhere, like he's not been here for ages and he yeah. just randomly shows up out of nowhere when I get behind this guy, I think I spot him in the corner of my eye. Like, I'm sure I've seen him. He comes up soon enough anyway. But I'm very sure I spotted him. Uh, the point That's where I ran away. Yeah, there he's there, I've seen his feet in the corner. That's This is me backing away now because I've seen him. Yeah, that's enough, bye. <laughs> <laughs> So the guy, the other guy's using like the tiny tornatrice, of course, which is that big lightning uh, fire snake, essentially that you're seeing coming at yeah. you. That really easy is, to dodge. That guy is definitely probably the easiest. Well, the beast claw guy is quite easy because he's got low HP. Oh, god, <coughs> the beast claw guy is easy because the way he does damage is comboing you over and over again, so you can predict when to parry. As I just take a cannon shot to the face. Yeah. So that's kind of why you want to do the whole um, nightmare frontier area because the extra defense and stuff and the extra upgrade materials allows you to be able to take care of this part a bit easier. These three hunters is quite difficult. I think I figured out why this guy comes into the room. Because you're above him? Yeah, because you're above where he stands in the beginning. Yeah. So his aggro leash, the range of it, reaches high enough for him to come into this room. Maybe. Which is pretty funny, because the other guys are standing like in the middle of the room and on the stairs, so they don't come in here. But he's like closest to it in terms of distance going in any direction. Yeah. So maybe that's why he comes in here. So obviously you don't want this guy to end up canning and cannoning you. Nah, he took away about 60% of my health with that one cannon shot. Um, I've always had trouble fighting rifle spear NPCs. See NPCs that have two guns, they're so fucking annoying. Because they've got infinite bullets and they make you aware of that. Yeah. So obviously you want to get in the parries on this guy. This guy gives you back like 20 bullets, 10 or 20 bullets is it that he gives you? He gives you like a shitload. Yeah, 20 bullets for killing that guy, so that's worth it. Um, and now we just need to finish off the last one, the one that was using the tiny tornatrus, uh, to get... What is it he drops again? He drops like fucking... Lead it's elixir? Like, it's like a madman's knowledge or something. Lead elixir, maybe? Oh no, but that's the ones in Nightmare Frontier that drop lead elixir. So this guy's like super easy. Yeah, just... Set even, up the, even the flame sprayer doesn't even do What's anything. funny is that this guy is essentially the same as the NPC that was in uh, Bergenworth, apart from he uses different arcane spells and a flame sprayer instead, but he's still easier because he has less damage and lower HP. Yeah, so we got another claw mark rune off that guy there. Yeah, that's the 10%, but you don't need that because we've already got the 20% claw mark rune from when we killed Gilbert after uh, during the Bergenworth episode, after we beat Rom. We killed this is that you can, you can stack the claw mark runes if you want, so when you get the 10, yeah. 20 and 30%, you can essentially do 60% visceral damage. So that's quite a lot. Yeah, so we're going to go down the bottom first, by the way, because the middle layer takes you to Parl. Yeah. So we're going to come down the bottom and get the items that are down here. Now, this would have been where Adela would have been um, when you were captured earlier in the playthrough, if you've been doing what we've been doing anyway. Um, this is where Adela would be. Um, 
Now what's happened is because you've killed Rom, the red moon's into effect, so all the baggers are gone and there's all these like these werewolves made of body parts. But all the baggers have a couple of chunks on them. So this place is really like it's a chunk rich environment. Yeah. So get in here and get I think you get the most chunks out of this place. Um and Nightmare of Menza, so the two places you get the most chunks. Yeah, I mean essentially game. at that point they're like, right. You need to have a maxed out weapon, so. Yeah, so they're just throwing chunks at you. Well, I mean, you need a plus nine weapon, you don't get the blood rock until after uh, Mikalash. Yeah, but whatever. So, now we're gonna go to the middle layer. The witches are gone now, so just feel free to walk through this door in any direction you like, unlike last time. So, this guy's tracking really fucking amazed me there. Like, he done a full 180. Yeah. He was so determined to hit me that he went against the laws of his AI. But, okay. So, I was thinking the Tornatrice was going to be good, but I think the Saw Cleaver is just much better for these guys due to the fact that it has the bonus damage against the beasts because it's a tearing, it's a saw weapon, it's a hunter weapon. Yeah. So, it has um, a damage bonus against them. And this guy's glitched out, and I don't know why. He was just like... But then it does make a jump for you. Do you know what, do you know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of like those dogs that wait outside... It's like if your house has a glass door, they've ran into the glass door so much they just always assume that it's closed. Yeah. So even though it's open, they'll sit and wait outside until you pretend to open the door before they'll jump through. So there's another chunk from that bagger and back to the dream. So obviously we caught a bit of footage there where we were thinking, right, do we do parlor now or do we go level up? But we figure it's best to just go level up, repair our equipment and things and that way we're taking parlor one fresh. Although chances are you could fight Parl and be completely fine with it. Yeah, like what we're going to do with Parl is of course we're going to stack on our uh, bolt defence, which is really good that we got Henrik's armour because it has the highest bolt defence in the game. Yeah. So we're going to wear full Henrik's, um, we're going to use a saw cleaver obviously because Parl's a beast and we'll get bonus damage and of course Parl uses bolt so the Tornatrus won't be very effective. But so there's no need to use the Tornatrus, but the saw cleaver with the paper will be more than enough to absolutely destroy Parl at this point. Yeah. Because, like we said, Parl is either relatively difficult at one stage, or when I, you actually fight him, like, it's quite easy. I honestly think you're meant to take on Parl, like, after him, after the witch is a Henwick, but before the forest. I think that's when that would probably be the intended time to take on Parl and Hypogean Gold. Maybe. Maybe about then. Or just before Rom or something like that. But otherwise, I really don't see the reason for doing Parl um, other than right now. Because it seems like, well, if you've got a plus three saw cleaver, then there's a good chance that Parl's going to be a tough fight. But if you've got a plus seven saw cleaver, Parl's easy mode. So I was thinking maybe a plus four or five would be like the right middle ground to take him on if you really wanted a good fight with him. Because yeah. he is actually a really cool boss. He moves, he moves way too much though. I think he moves a little bit too much. It's tough to get any hits in because he attacks and then immediately moves somewhere else. So... You, you're you're probably going to be better fighting power locked off just because he moves so much it's going to mess with the direction you're dodging and with the camera and all that sort of shit so it's probably best to fight power locked off but we're going to go full Henrix because Henrix has all the bolt defense and to be honest I think it is the Xanthus set of this game like no you're just pulling a Gary I mean I know okay so the I trick believe the, the, the actual strategy for Parl is break one leg and then break the other and then you win I mean, yeah, that is essential. So I only break one leg. Now, if I go over here, I want to charge attack again. That would break that leg, and then it'd be down again, and then I go to the other leg and do it again. And you can keep him down on the ground until the end of the fight like that. However, we want to show off some of Parl's moves and stuff. So I'm going to beat him up a little bit, and um, then uh, we're going to show you like what his third form does, where all his attacks are yeah. at the strongest, where he's like firing out orbs of lightning and stuff like that as well. So I mean, you can also, like you saw there, if you can get a really good connect and hit to his head, he pretty much just goes full, I'm a stupid skeleton mode, and then falls on the ground, then you can visible yeah. his head. So I got really lucky there, and I hit him before his AoE went off, so that was good, but pretty much if Pearl ducks his head under like the middle of his body, roll away from him. Now his AoE has shorter range behind him than it does in front as well. It's got about twice the range in front of him as it does behind him. So it's really easy to just like roll past him a few times and get on his back end so that he can't hit you. But this is Parl in mega mode when there's like lightning flying everywhere and he's in Super Saiyan essentially with his hair all pointing up. And you can see there's like little lightning bolts coming out of every attack that he does. Now luckily it seems like these are pretty easy to dodge. Um, as you see the range of the AoE is, I'm just on the outside of the, uh, the the explosion there. Yeah, I mean most of his attacks are just kind of swipey things, uh, or the AoE, he doesn't really have much else other than mm. that. So the extended saw cleaver is good as well because he's taller than you, so if you're under him your R1s connect, 
and you do a lot more damage to him as well yeah. because you're always hitting him. So like we said, just hitting the back legs or connecting with his head with an attack. The Hunter's Axe is absolutely amazing for Parl because the overhead R1 just goes bang, hits him on the floor and then just visceral him. As well as if you do get the time to put in the full like extended charge attack with the Hunter's Axe, the spin, you will definitely flatten him if you connect with it. Yeah. Definitely flatten him if you... like, And you just... Do that, go to his tail, spin to win again, go to his tail, spin to win again, and he just won't get up. So Paul's actually pretty easy overall when you compare him to the the other bosses that are now available in this area. So yeah. you shouldn't have too much trouble with Paul. Um, now I believe what we're going to do is check all our gear. We're going to repair everything, check our runes, all that stuff. As per usual, guys, just get into the habit of doing that. And with the souls from uh, blood from Pal, we're going to level up and get to 30 strength as quickly as possible, like we've been saying for the last couple of episodes. Yeah. So we're always wearing the moon rune because the moon rune gives us more more blood echoes and that gets us to the cannon faster. Once we get the cannon, we can take off the moon rune essentially and have that third slot for our utility because we're pretty much always going to be running the health and the stamina runes because they're the most beneficial because they're always they're always a thing. You can always have 10% more HP and you will always benefit from having 15% or 10% stamina bonus. Like, that's, that's something that just is inherently always there for you to take advantage of, which is great. Um, so yeah, I'm just checking my runes and stuff like that. Um, but I think the next section is on to the One Reborn. Now the good thing is that there's uh, you don't actually get that much aggro in the next section because of all the, uh, the little places you can go. Like, there's a warp location and stuff like that, which is really good. To, uh, to skip a lot of like, enemy interaction in yeah. the area, which is otherwise, because the, the enemies in, uh, outside of the, uh, the Hypogean jail, I suppose it would be the actual jail, are kind of a pain in the ass. They, are, they can dish out a fuck ton amount of damage. Like, like, I they, mean, can, they can one-shot you, like you know their attacks can one-shot you. This is the point in the game where the game becomes more about patience than it becomes about difficulty, because the enemies aren't difficult, they just have a lot of HP and they do a lot of damage. Now, that's pretty much the only change compared to the early game. Um, but it, you shouldn't find it too difficult, you just need to be a little bit more careful. Expect the fights to go on about maybe twice as long as you'd expect them to in the, yeah. the rest of the game. Because the enemies just have a ton of HP now. However, like we said, we're going to show you a route that minimises the amount of interaction with the enemies you need to do at this stage. And a lot of the time, really, like people might be like, "Oh, you're just running away from enemies, whatever." But we make we get like so many extra souls from the moon room. Yeah, and really, let's be fair, it's more hassle than it's worth when there's certain enemies that are just like like these things right here. Yeah. These chests, these things have like flailing attacks and stuff like that, and they do a ton of damage. They have attacks that that put you on your back, so like, they immobilize you. You have attacks like that, which are really annoying to deal with in a regular, um, like just on a regular enemy. It's not so bad with a boss because then there's a reason for it to like always pancake you and shit like that as a boss but this is just like a regular enemy that can just pancake you for no reason just because it's a big eye monstrosity coming out of a chest so you want to definitely kill that one building woman uh, there because that will make getting a certain item getting like a blood chunk a little bit easier later on now dropping down here means that you won't aggro immediately don't get that item by the way although it looks tempting don't get it because there's, there's a trap there so yeah. I'm going to kill this thing as quick as possible. So of course, fire paper, charge attack, and then just R1 the hell out of it. Um, so it went down relatively quick there because I got the free charge attack in. Without that charge attack, I would have had to hit it like an all three or four times, and that's a pain. This here, when you get close to the item, just run it, just roll away immediately. Because it's, it's almost as if they think we don't know they made Dark Souls. Yeah. Now, we are just going to pick up the item and run because one of the <clears> other guys <throat> was sort of like, caught on yeah. he's there and he was chasing us so and those guys go. those guys are arranged to look like they're guarding something like in the middle of them there's nothing there if you grab the tonitrus you've already grabbed all the items that yeah. are past that point worth getting so don't worry about that shit now we're taking the elevator up this takes us to the very top where um where i missed that chunk at the very beginning of yahar ghoul and where we picked up the first item in the video which was the uh the helmet yeah that's where we are now, that's the elevator. So the helmet would be right there in front of us, just slightly to the left. So we're going to go down and we're going to land on this roof because this gives us an amazing shortcut because we've grabbed everything else here when we've done Hypogean Go. So the reason that you want to kill, you want to have killed that bell ring room is if you... This has been... A, I've actually died here because of this. If you don't kill the bell ring room, these dogs will respawn. So by the time that you've killed these dogs here and you go around to kill the bone wolf, 
the dogs have respawned, so they get you at the arse, and then if you've not killed the bone yeah. wolf, you just get like ganked by all three of them. And that's a chunk yeah. uh, drop right there. No, it's the, three chunks. Yeah, so that's so one three. of the best. It's three. There's very few, very few ones where nightmares drop three chunks, and that's one of them. The other ones are in Menzus. But um, this bone dog's also guarding a chunk. He does drop me a twin shard, and I've actually found that these guys are really reliable when it comes to chunk drops compared to the wolves in Upper Cathedral. So if you don't want to spend 30 insight per chunk, I find it really easy to go through these guys to get them. Now the ones, um, the ones down at Parl have never dropped me a chunk. Only this one and um, the two that are in this next section we're about to warp to using this bath. Now these are great. You can use these if there's a, a co-op phantom in your world. It just teleports you to a different part of the, the a different part of the place. And I don't know how they managed to do that without a loading screen. Yeah. But it's it's pretty cool. So we just appeared. We're now on the other side of Yahargu. So like to the left is where we is like where Parla is like. Um, in Hypogee and Goal, there would have been the uh, the four madman's knowledge that crouched in front of a door. That door's now opened, and that's the normal way here. But we're just gonna fucking skip that because you can go through the bath and it's much safer. The yeah. doors to the like if you if we were to jump over that wall and go to the right and just keep going straight, we'd get to the door. So this allows us to just stay away from all the stupid bone guys because we the bone guy like the chest with the bones coming out of them they're like down below us. And obviously we don't want to aggro them or go anywhere fucking near them. Yeah, so there's, there's no reason to deal with them if we yeah. don't have to. And of course, like th this is the thing where people like just run past it and stuff like that. <clears throat> We're trying to show you a way to do this like safely. And the safest way to survive a fight is not be in the fight with the fucking tough enemy. So we're going to take whichever way around we can get, which is reliable and 100% safe. Like that one right there, where the only thing that's in your way to get to this section is two dogs. This is like an incredibly reliable route to take to skip half of Yahargul. Um, and you can see there's a rune down there, there's an item down in that corner which we're going to get to. Um, that's one of the tougher items to grab, purely because if you go the normal way you're probably going to get ganged up on by a lot of these chests. Yeah. But there's a nice little uh, there's a nice little alcove that you can run out of, um, or a, a nice little like, doorway cave thing that you can run out of, grab the item and then just run back in it and break the aggro. So you can get to the, the boss without these guys chasing you. <clears throat> so coming through here which is that door that was next to that bone wolf and down here leads out to the bone chest guys but so. don't go there yet you want to get this item this is an 18 percent physical damage gem um it's a tempering gem it's one of the it's just a regular gem so it goes in the saw cleaver it goes in the tonitrus so that's perfect um this guy didn't drop me anything i don't think but yeah there's the oh he did he dropped me a chunk how nice of him oh but um, that that gemstone is really good, and of course we're going to be putting that on our tonitrus as soon as we're finished with this area. Um, but first things first, let's grab the lake rune and then get the hell out of dodge as quickly as we can. So we could go to the left and get the madman's knowledge and stuff that's on the other side, but what we're going to do is break aggro first. So I'm trying to roll away from them, and then I'm going to run back into the doorway that I came from. Yeah. Because these guys can't get through, and then I can go up and above the top of them so that they won't be aggroed onto me like I've been saying. And it's, it's much safer. Like, those guys, generally, we just feel are way more hassle than it's worth. Way more hassle than it's worth. Yeah, definitely. I mean, not you definitely want to pick up that gem as well. It's almost as if the game's like, if you use that gem, you're going to have probably, like, definitely an easier time. It's almost 20% extra The game damage, gives so. you three really good physical gems. It gives you an 18% gem, which we just got. It gives you a 16.5% gem later on in the game. And it gives you an 18% uh, droplet gem, which can go in any gem slot, regardless of whether it's a, a crescent or a triangular slot or any of that. Yeah. The droplet gems uh, fit in any part of the weapon. So that's one, that's obviously another one I'm going to use because it's an 18% bonus. So the, the most damage the game gives you is like 18 physical, 18 physical, and a 16.5 physical. There are of course like the 20% arcane and blood tinge gems and stuff like yeah. that are also available, but I think 16.5% is the highest bolt gem that you get in the regular game. Um, of course if you want better gems you're going to have to go dungeon diving, um, which is always fun to just grind that wall for hours on end. <laughs> so, right. Ahead of us is essentially this area's boss, the main boss. And Super weak to bolt, by the way. So make sure you've got that on. Well, somewhat weak to bolt. Weaker, weakest to bolt. Yeah. Now, right, so like the Tower Knight in Demon Souls, you want to run up the... We, like, I, go up the right, I go up the right side first because there's bullets at the end of this path. This is something that wasn't marked in the official guide. It wasn't, but whatever. 
I mean, it's only 10 bullets, but they also missed out a wandering nightmare as well. So how do we know if we might, we might, we might have missed something? We, we don't know. Have, we might have. I mean, I doubt we have. Probably not. Let's be fair. The guy does very good. Yeah, it's almost, it's almost too good. Almost as almost. If, almost as if people like us couldn't have done it. <laughs> We're just so salty. Why didn't they ask us? I know. God damn it. But anyway, anyway kill, kill these bitches. Um, now, I wanted to try something which has worked off before when I had a much better weapon. Um, by better, I mean I had a Ludwig's Holy Blade which does a shitload of like poise damage and was and managed to break the one reborn very quickly. Buffed it, ran off of here and just plunging attacked him. And it just broke him immediately and then I just beat the shit out of his face with the two-handed L2s. However, I would highly recommend that you don't fight the one reborn up here. Nah, I, like the first thing I'm going to do is get like down in front of him and try and do as much damage. So I get two ticks in with a plunging attack there. But which... also don't do that because the amount of damage you take from the plunging attack you could easily like kill you quite like if you got unlucky you could kill you quite easily with the amount of damage you've taken from yeah this isn't like a stellar one reborn fight to be honest with you i hate this boss can't stand it because the boss doesn't have any openings really yeah because anytime it doesn't attack it just all the legs which as you can see there's about a million of them just start kicking constantly and the body and the head of the one reborn have two separate move sets that work in tandem so while this one is kicking away and shit like that, whenever it does get an opening, the body can use that fucking spell where it's raining body parts down on me right now that you can see, so it's really tough to get an opening in in this boss. As well as randomly his feet can just explode. Yeah, so... I don't like this Kind guy. of like any boss, you <clears throat> concentrate some damage on its weak points, so... What, what happens here is, if you can hit the arse end of it, you can get an visceral at its head at the other side. No, um, you can't. You can't visceral the one reborn. You can. No, you can't. You can. No, you can't. When he falls over, you attack his body to do bonus damage. I could swear I've visceraled it. You've not visceraled the one reborn. And all the time that I beat the one reborn, I've never visceraled him once, and I've knocked him down many a time. Point all is, you, you, you can at the very least like get <clears> him into the sort of visceral stage. Be warned, though. There have be, there's been more than one occasion where I've got him into the stage where he's like fallen down and he's supposed to be vulnerable and the body is just like the body the the uh, the head the caster part of it just keeps raining body parts down on me even though it's meant to be vulnerable yeah now that attack there just get up just get to height because it covers the entire uh, the entire arena so you just got to get on the stairs higher than it to avoid it and i hate that move because it just breaks the fight down completely a fight that is already a case of you need to do what the boss wants you to do and then they force that on you as well. Like that's one of the reasons I don't like this fight is you don't get to play it your way at all. Like you don't get to go in for openings in the middle of their attacks because anytime he does attack, he's kicking you about a million times in the face. And also shooting at you with shit. <clears throat> it's just yeah. it's just this constant. boss is just a mess. This is just throw mess at them and see what happens. I think that was kind of what they were trying to go for. <clears throat> they were trying to go for a boss that doesn't have an opening. It doesn't have a particular strategy. You just have to hit it. Like, that's the only thing we can say for the one who will just hit it. Yeah. Because... He's, he's a super frustrating fight, guys. Don't, don't, we're not going to lie to you. See shit like that is super annoying. Also, see if his, uh, see if his spit catches you. Yeah. Doesn't matter if you keep rolling, it just keeps doing damage to you. So if you get caught in his spit, there's a good chance that you've lost the fight. Um, it's, it's retarded. Like, the one where he covers the entire arena in it, that, that one is just so bullshit. So I'm finally getting hits in, I finally break him, and now I'm going to try and get in his head. So like this part here, the one with the arm, like the, the small skeletal body, that fucker can... He's still weak and he's dropping shit on me and blowing up while he's recovering. Now, the one reborn, is it, it's not really that difficult to be honest. Is it? No, it's, it's just frustrating as all hell. Yeah. Like you have to be really patient for this. Like this point here, he I've had him be in this state and he's still casting fucking rain bodies and all that shit on me. So you just have to be really patient with him. Almost every time when he gets up from that vulnerable state, by the way, he will go straight for an AOE, but he's already trying to drop bodies on me because he's a mad fucking dick. You can see that it is quite easy to break his arms though, so... I would say this guy thing. is worse than Sin. Sin? Mm -hmm. Oh. Nah. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's more frustrating than Sin. Way more. Because at least when Sin flies, when he lands, there's an opening. Yeah. This guy just doesn't have any, and I hate that. So, I hate him for it. Last time, going back to the dream. Yeah, we've got a, we've got a shitload of uh, echoes now, so we can go level up and stuff like that. Um, One Reborn is a pretty rewarding fight overall in terms of um, what you get for beating the area, because we've got a lot more chunks, as you can see now. We've got a plus nine Tonitrus, which is 
like one more upgrade and that's us maxed it out so it's going to be doing a shitload of damage um of course there's the 18 percent gem so because we picked that up we're going to check all our gems and make sure we're using the best possible outcome so with the tonitrus we're obviously trying to maximize blunt damage and bolt damage because tonitrus is blunt so that would make sense and of course any gems we take off the tonitrus we're going to check the saw cleaver just in case we've taken a better gem off the tonitrus that we can put onto the saw cleaver yeah so um, that's pretty much it for Yahar Ghoul guys, um, this, was a, this was another tough one overall because the boss is just such a pain in the ass. It's a really frustrating one, we don't, I really wouldn't blame them for turning it off and leaving it a day now. Yeah. Because that's how I feel every time I beat him and Rom, it just so happens it happened to be one after the other sometimes. So the next part is Nightmare of Menzis. Which is going to be a much, it's technically easier than like... Uh, Nightmare Frontier and stuff like that. The only really tough part of Nightmare Amends is the very beginning, but you can yeah. just run past everything. But we'll see that in the next part anyway. Yeah, we'll, we'll show you guys a good way of getting through Nightmare Amends. But until then, guys, hit the video on the left if you want to go and watch the... It would be Nightmare Frontier? Yeah. Yeah. So hit the one on the left if you haven't seen Nightmare Frontier and you want to get every item in there. Or hit the one on the right when it's uploaded and that'll take you to Nightmare Amends. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed that, and we'll see you in the next part, guys. Bye. Yep.